um, that's like aimed that is aimed toward um, helping courses be successful with Google products. Um, also, all skill levels are welcome. So if you already know quite a bit about Google Docs, you might um, learn a few things tonight, pick up some tips and tricks. And if you're totally just starting out, um, of course, we are gonna throw a bunch of information at you and feel free to ask questions as we go. Um, Finally, uh, I just wanted to say neither Sandy nor I are employed by Google. Um, we really just love these project products so much. We just wanted to tell you about them. So let's get to it. Um, before we dive in and tell you more about ourselves and Google Docs in general, we would like to get an idea of where you're at with them right now. So I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll. If you're able to partic in the participate in the poll, please do so now. And if not, but you can see it for some reason, feel free to answer your questions in the chat. I'll also read them now just in case you can't see them. Um, how much do you already know about Google Docs? The second question is, have you ever created a Google Doc? And I'll give a moment while you guys are quick. Oh. Yeah, we did it. Okay, 100% <laughs> participation. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll, share out the results so you can see what I'm seeing. Okay, so it looks like um, nobody here feels like they are an expert with Google Docs, but we have um, lots of people in both categories of not knowing anything at all and having kind of a vague understanding of what Google Docs is all about. And then again, um, have you ever created a Google Doc? Most of us have not, but a fair few of us have. So we will um, just keep that in mind as we go through our class tonight. Okay, I'm moving forward. And I'm gonna let Sandy take it away. Hello everyone. So we always like to start with a little bit of information about ourselves. So I am uh, a 27 year member of Sweet Adelines. I sing lead with the Helena Express course in Montana. Uh, love this organization. I am also the communications coordinator for the region. I am married. I have two adult uh, sons and I'm sort of excited this is my 50th anniversary year for my marriage. So, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. That happens in August. Um, I have taught a lot of Microsoft types of classes and I too am excited about Google and I think it's what our courses um, need, even though I have been a Microsoft person most of my career. And hopefully after you go through some of our classes, you'll understand why both Rachel and I are excited about it. Uh, I have a degree in information systems management and I've been in this region about 11 years. So I'm gonna turn it over to Rachel now. Thanks, Sandy. Um, so I live in Ocean Shores with my husband and my nine month old puppy and our two parakeets. Uh, I teach music full time pre-K through high school uh, in the North Beach School District, which is right here on the beach, of course. Um, I have a bachelor's in music education from Pacific Lutheran University with an emphasis in choral music. And then I have a master's in education with an emphasis in learning and technology which is basically how to incorporate technology into the classroom, which works really well for this. So um, I'm also a level one Google certified educator. Um, and let's see, okay, barbershop. I've been doing barbershop since 2008, but I got really involved in 2012. That's when it kind of like took over my life, you know, that hobby that we do. Um, I am one of two musical directors for Harmony Explosion Northwest, which is a barbershop summer camp um, for kids. I am the director of Jet City's Chorus out of Federal Way, Washington. I'm a recent um, member of the Region 13 faculty, and I've sung in international level quartets, most recently as the tenor of Renegade. So that's a little bit about me. All right, so in this class, you are going to learn the basic functions and features of Google Docs. You're going to create a new document. You'll learn some formatting basics and how they work and actually get to collaborate with each other using Google Docs. I'm really excited about that. As I mentioned earlier, this is the second class in a series of classes all about how to use Google products for your chorus. Sandy, would you talk about some of the comparisons? Yes, so I mentioned Microsoft and I'm sure the majority of us have worked in Microsoft Word for most of our, our computer careers. Um, so 
one of there's lots of, of good things about Microsoft Word, but there's a lot of good things about Google Docs as well. Um, the biggest thing is the collaboration um, with Google Docs and Google Drive. So, you know, it's no more do you have to ask, oh, well, what's the latest version of this document? Can you email it to me? You'd be able to see that on your Google Drive if you were using Google and be able to see any changes that have made in real time online. Uh, it's, it's not quite as rich in its functionality as Microsoft Word, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm sure with most of us, we know probably about 50 or 60% of what you can do in Word because it's pretty complex. Um, and Google Docs has the majority of the features that you'll want to know about. That um, You can add images into Docs, you can do drawings, you can do tables, headers and footers, table of contents. Um, most of the, the functionality that we need in our courses, Google Docs has. And it's easier really to learn and easier to use than Microsoft Word. Um, it's free whereas the Microsoft products can be quite expensive. Uh, Google and Google products all reside in the cloud. So you don't have um, the software on your computer. It's all uh, online based. Uh, it is something um, that you can use and open up in any of your devices. So Word um, uh, can excuse me, it can be opened up in a tablet, in a PC, in a browser window. It's pretty accessible. And if you don't have access to it online and you know you're not going to ahead of time, you can always save your documents offline to work on them and then they'll sync back up in Google Docs. Um, the, the one of the big features of Drive and Docs is their search capabilities. So Drive is that file cabinet, if you remember from our earlier class, with all these different file folders that are part of it. And those file folders contain Docs, Google Docs, they can contain Word documents, they can contain Excel spreadsheets, they can contain um, Google Sheets. And you have the ability to put in a keyword or two in the search window in your drive, and it'll pull up anything that has that, that word in it. And so it just makes it much easier for us to do some searching. And you're going to learn that you don't actually have to save in the Google products. They save automatically, so you don't lose your documents if you forgot to save them or you didn't turn on that temporary save feature in the Microsoft products. Now, the Microsoft products are a little bit better in terms of, of having third parties that have written programs that can feed into the, the Microsoft products and can be used, but Google Docs has a lot of third party add-ins as well. Um, Microsoft seamlessly integrates with all of its products. Google does the same thing. So the seamless integration with Google Docs is there. Both Word and Google Docs can let you start with templates. So if you want to see what's out there, instead of you having to invent the wheel, those templates are available for you. And they both have export and import features. So there's a lot of good with Word. There's just as much good with Google Docs. And the collaboration is what wins the game for me because everybody can collaborate using Google Docs. So Rachel, anything you want to add? Um, just how much I love the autosave feature. That was always really scary for me when I was like a newbie with this software and like, I just exit out and then just like pray for a moment, like, please let it have worked. And then it always did. And that was, that was pretty great. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay. When you leave here today, um, we would like to be able to say, we would like, sorry, you to be able to say these three statements to yourself and have them ring true. So I can create a new Google Doc. I can convert a Word document to a Google Doc. And finally, I can share editing of the doc with others in my chorus. That's our hope for you. So 
So we, we love activities in our classes. And so what we want to do is in just a few moments, we're going to go into breakout sections. So, and in those breakout sections, the basic class is going to be with Rachel and Rachel is going to go over these, these basic things step by step, how to create a new document, show you the text formatting options, the paragraph and line spacing options, how to align things in your document, the lists or the bullets, how to add those, what, how to set up your page layout with margins, orientation, all of that. She'll talk and show you about that fact that you don't have to say, but you haven't lost anything because there's a version history that she'll share with you. And she's going to share and show you step by step how to create a document from a Google Doc from a template. In the more advanced class, which if you feel you are advanced and you can help volunteer and do and learn how to do these things actually online with our group, you can put in the chat room that you think you want to participate in the advanced class. And so we're going to do a breakout and those in the advanced class will be with me. I won't so much be doing step by step and Rachel, you can go ahead and change to the activity slide if you want. Um, I'm not going to be doing step by step as, as much as it is. I'm going to use a document that I'm going to share with you and ask for volunteers in my class to actually do the step by step online for the group. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. And so if you want to go ahead in the chat, if you think you're in the advanced, want to be in the advanced room, go ahead and add that in the, the chat. And Rachel is, as we are speaking, creating the breakout rooms and she is assigning people to those rooms. Um, it's really, it's really pretty, pretty easy. So if you think you know enough and you want to actually volunteer in my advanced class, go for it. Just say you want to be in there. But if you want to have Rachel demonstrate, you don't need to put anything in there. So how are we doing, Rachel? Are we getting enough people in the chat? Do we know what breakouts people want to be in? We have one advanced person um, so far, and I, I actually just wanted to say, oh, two advanced people. Um, I wanted to say that if you'll remember from back at the very beginning of our class when we did our um, our poll and nobody said that they were they felt like an expert in Google Docs, right? And so when we say advanced, we're really talking about like you have some knowledge, like you might know a few things. You don't need to know everything to be in the advanced class. Um, otherwise, it might not make sense for you to be here at all tonight, right? So um, we are all learning together. So you don't need to be an expert to be in the advanced class. So if you've had some experience, that might be a good spot for you. Thank you, Rachel. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to give it just a couple more minutes in case what I said resonated with anybody else. <laughs> so and far we've got, go ahead. ahead. I was just going to say, um, so far we've still got those two, those two individuals in the um, advanced class. Oh no, I hope they're not getting scared to be with me. I'm, I'm putting the step-by-step -step guide in the chat too, so that you'll have that available if you're able to access that. <laughs> And if we don't have a lot of people that want to be in the advanced class, you know, Rachel and I are very, very flexible here. So what we might do is not do a breakout and let Rachel do step by step and then ask for some volunteers to try some, some of the things that we just <laughs> taught. So. That sounds great. I think we <laughs> Thanks, should go Rachel, that for being flexible. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna just change everything about my screen here. So hold on a moment. Thank you for your patience. Dun, 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 dun. This, no, that one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your patience, everyone. She sang. I'm not sure why I sang it, but I did. So there you go. 
um, because I'm a sweet Adeline. That's why I sang it, if that makes sense. Okay. Do you ever have this problem where you have so many tabs open and then you get lost in your, ah, there it is. Okay. Whew. Got it. I got it. You guys we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, start by sharing the step-by-step -step guide. Um, and we'll just kind of walk through it together. So, um, so this is just going to basically take you through the Google doc specifics. Um, I'm going to start with how to find it. Um, oh, okay. Hold on. Let me really quickly make sure this is available to you. Rachel, I be. just fixed it and I you think got we it. got it now. Thank Hopefully you. Hopefully awesome. that works. Yeah, which is a great example of how quick and easy it is to share documents. So, okay. Um, so we're gonna start with navigating to Google Drive. So we touched on this last workshop, but if you weren't there, this is really important for you to know on how to get to Google Drive, okay? So to get to Google Drive, you're gonna open a new tab in your browser. In the navigation bar at the top, you're going to type in drive.google.com. I've actually already done that, so I have my Google Drive open over here. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Next up, um, you're going to navigate in your drive to wherever you want your Google Doc to exist. So you, if you're just starting out, might not have any folders in your Google Drive or um, like us right here, we have quite a few in our um, tech Google Drive. So I'm going to navigate to intro to Google Docs, double click it, okay? And then I have now completed this first step. Moving right along, my next step, I'm gonna create a blank Google document. So in order to do this, I'm going to find the new button right here click on it. And you can see I can actually create a bunch of different things if I wanted to. But right now we're going to focus on Google Docs. So I can just click right on Google Docs. And in a new tab, as if by magic, it creates a document. So so that's what I've done. I've created a document. And now I have access to it. So as soon as I start editing this document, then it will actually oops, wrong tab, automatically start showing up in this folder that I created or that I navigated to rather um but we're not quite there yet i haven't changed anything so let's go to the next step okay we're going to name our document in the upper left corner that's where the text box is going to be we're going to click on where it says untitled document and we're going to change the name i'll take name suggestions in the chat if you've got them what should i name my document Looking for those creative people. Aw, I love it. George the document. Beautiful. Okay, so we've got Mr. George here, the document, and he is officially our document. We have named him. We're feeling good. I'm gonna move on. Okay, so you might now, if you um, have ever in Microsoft Word created a document and done a bunch of work on it and then forgot to save it and then it got deleted or something weird happened, you might at this point um, already be thinking, how do I save, file, save, file, save, but there's no save button, right? And that's because it automatically saves. And you can actually check this, um, this little cloud here with a check mark in it. If you click on it right up at the top, it says all changes saved to drive. So if you're ever feeling nervous, you can always check there. I'm gonna go back into my file where it actually lives and you can see George the file is currently in that file where I navigated to in the beginning. So that was successful. So now as I make changes, it's just gonna save automatically as I go. I can close at any time. And all I need to do is come back to this place in my files by going drive.google.com, navigating here, double clicking on George, and I'm gonna get this file. Okay, um, actually I'm gonna stop for one second. Does anybody have any questions so far on what I just did or how to do it? Okay, I will attempt to slow down. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh yeah, Janice, go for it. When I, when I work in Word, I usually save my documents both as a Word file and as a PDF file. So how would you do that in mm -hmm. uh, Google so, Docs? Yes, so I can actually get back to that a little later. I think, Sandy, are you talking about that later today? I will, yes. 
Okay, so so nearer to the end of our workshop, Sandy's going to go over those export options, which are super important. I totally agree. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward with George. We are now going to format our text, right? Something very common and very necessary. So back in George, I'm actually going to sneak out of George here and instead go to my formatting example. <clears throat> super uh, important example here. Okay. So I can do several things here. I've got uh, basically a formatting bar up here that can do um, the main things that you would see in Word. Um, Sandy, can you catch the unmuted person? Thank you. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start with changing the font, okay? So in order to change anything on the document, I just need to highlight it and then up top, you can see it's got a font right here um, and it actually also says font when I hover over it. That's a really helpful feature. So I'm going to click on that and then I have a whole bunch of choices. I can actually download more of them, but I'll just stick with these for today and I can change my font. Okay. I can also change the size of the font right next to it, make it smaller or make it much bigger with the pluses and minuses, plus and minus. Um, alternatively, I can just click where it says font size right on the number and it'll bring up a menu of options. Last way, I can click and I can type in my, uh, my choice and hit enter, and that will also change the size of my font. Um, in order to bold, italicize, or underline, again, you need to select part of your text, whichever you want to be changed, and then you just click bold, or you could click to italicize, or you could click to underline, or of course you can get crazy, do all three, ta-da. Okay, <laughs> you can also change the color of the text and the background. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Text color is located right here. You would click and then you could change it, let's see, to a new color. Okay. You can also change the background color with this button right here, the highlight color, by clicking and selecting. That one didn't show up very well. Let's pick a more obvious color. There we go. All right, <clears throat> so we just covered, let me go back to my step-by-step -step guide, the font, the font size, the additional text options, including text color and highlight color, now we're going to move on to aligning or justifying our text. So <clears throat> right now, this text is in left justification. So I'll show you what I mean by that in a moment. Um, but basically, when I select my text, I can shift it, right, just like you can in Microsoft Word. So in order to do that, I click on the align button, which is right here, currently left aligned. I can center align it. So now the whole thing centered, or I can right align it. Okay, or finally, I can justify the text. So justifying the text, in case you don't know this, um, is where basically all of the full lines of text are, you make them equal to each of the, the borders of the page. So you can see if I took a ruler and like made a line here, all of these words mostly line up. And on the other side, they do the same. If I just left justify this, put it all to the left, now that's true on the left side, but on the right side, the lines are kind of all squeeha and whatnot. So that's that's what justification does. Okay, I'm going to go back to my step by step guide for a moment. There are examples of all of these things and a clear how to in here. So if I'm going a little fast or you're still feeling confused, um, I encourage you to go through this a little bit later and kind of play around with it. Okay, spacing is next. So. The spacing is this button right here, okay? There are a ton of options. I'm just gonna go through a few of them. I'm gonna basically just go through the top part here. So when I select my text, it's important to select your text so it, it applies, and then I click on the spacing, I can change how far apart each line is. So if you needed it to be double spaced, right? You can easily double space it by clicking here and then double. Alternatively, I could do single space or something in between. Okay, so that's that option. 
I can also add space after or before a paragraph. You can see here I have two paragraphs plus the header. If I add space after the paragraph, it just put a little, little section there between, right? To just help my formatting be a little bit more clear. Okay. So that is spacing. Um, this is one of my favorite things about um, about Google Docs, and I know that Word does something. Whoop, Word does something similar, but I'm not sure if they have the bullet point. The no, sorry, the um, the checklist feature. So Sandy, you would have to you would have to inform me on that. Do you know? They they do not without going into one of the special ribbon elements um, and see. creating that as a form. So yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to make a list here. Um, what do I need at the store? Milk, eggs, um, cream cheese. Um, I need um, um, lettuce. Yeah, perfect. OK, that sounds like a terrible. Well, maybe not that bad. I was thinking if I just threw it all together in a meal. I mean, not my favorite. Anyway, off task. So um, right up here, you can make these into a checklist. I love this feature. I love checklists. So I click the checklist button with my text highlighted, and you can see it's put little boxes next to it. But that's actually not the cool part. The cool part is that I can interact with these boxes by clicking on them, and it crosses things off my list, which is very satisfying. Um, alternatively, if you wanted to go the more traditional route or your project called for it, you can create bullet points. And again, this is right next to the checklist. Okay, there's a drop down arrow. I can click here and I have a whole slew of options. So I just picked the simplest one, but of course you could pick whatever made sense to you, whatever you wanted for your formatting. Um, or perhaps you're creating a numbered list, which is right next to the bullet numbered list drop down arrow, and I have a bunch of choices. Or I can just click and it'll pick the first one, okay? If I just click right here rather than the arrows, it just goes with the first option, which is usually the most common. All right, so that is my list format. Okay, and again, this document has all of these examples. I just kind of want you to see this and understand how we're traveling along. Um, next up, we're gonna create, uh, actually, sorry, I wanna pause for one moment. Does anybody have any questions about formatting text in Google Docs? Can you explain again what the justify is? Absolutely, yeah. So um, you'll see this in books, actually, a lot of the time, um, if you start like noticing the way that your books are formatted. So um, when we have, big chunks of text like paragraphs, right? If you have it left justified, what that is basically telling the program to do is on the left side of your screen, all of the words are lined up with the left border. So here's like the left border, right, of your page. So all the words are lined up there with the exception of the indents that are created with the paragraphs, okay? I mean, I could take those out, but, um, but on the right hand side, you can see that they're not these words, many kittens, they activity that and at themselves, it almost made a sentence, um, are not at all lined up with this, um, with this, with this border, with this boundary. So if I wanted my, my words to be lined up with the right and the left boundaries, that's when I would justify my text. So I highlight the entire text that I want to be justified, click on a line. And then when I click on justify, it now made it so that many kittens they activity are all aligned with my right border as well as that and at and themselves. The only thing that doesn't get aligned with your right border is the last um, line of any paragraph that you have. Okay, which I guess actually would include themselves themselves isn't quite lined up because it's the last line of the current paragraph. So that's what the justify button does. Yeah. Any other questions on formatting how to do it. Yes. Uh, what about um, tables? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is so that, is that advanced for not tonight? Um, so we hadn't planned to go over that, I don't think. But Sandy, do you think we could do that? Is there, um, I don't even I don't see a place on the toolbar for a table. That's why. So oh, there's a go up to. So if if you would indulge us, let's we're going to have time at the end. And we're going to take some questions and we'll definitely show you how to insert a table, Karen. Is that okay? Yeah. And just as kind of a side note, um, 
So there are some features that are not, sorry, that are available in Google Docs, but in order to kind of keep this minimalistic look, they're just in menus. So some of the less frequent options can be found easily through some of the menus in the top. So yeah, we will cover tables. That's, that's an awesome question. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to head back to my step-by-step -step guide and move right along. So creating a Google Doc from a template. So say you're doing something like um, creating um, a resume or a, a list, like a grocery list or um, a meet, meeting notes. Meeting notes, I use that feature all the time. You could actually use a template, something that has already been created with the formatting, and then you just have to edit the parts that are um, relevant to you. So. How you would do that is you can notice that I've navigated back to my folder where I keep George um, and my puppy formatting example. So once you're in the location that you want your file to be, you click on new. As a reminder, before we just clicked on Google Docs and that opened a new document in a new tab. But for a template, we're going to go over to this arrow. Now I could click on blank document and that would do the exact same thing. It would open a blank document in a new tab but I would like to go from a template. So I'm gonna click on that option. And now I have some choices. So you can see that I have some options for resumes if I wanted to do that. Some letters, personal, work. This is where I live in the meetings, the meeting notes, I love this. Um, so I'm gonna click on the meeting notes here. And when I click on it, thinking for a moment, but then it's going to create a document. So it just created this document in my folder. Okay. And now I can edit it however I want. So um, I'm just going to change the date here. Maybe I'll just change it up here just super quickly. There we go. And I could, I could edit anything on this page. In fact, if I don't like the formatting, I could change the colors and the size. It just gives me kind of a starting place. Um, and then when I'm done, I can just close it. And you can see that my meeting notes are in my file with George, safe and sound. When I double click on them, it opens and my changes have all been saved. So that's how you use a template. One more time, it's new and then hover over Google Docs, specifically the arrow next to Google Docs, click on from a template, and that will load in all the options that you get to choose from. Okay, um, let's see. Next up, we're gonna talk about how to upload a Microsoft Word document to Google Drive. So if you are somebody that has been using Microsoft Word for ever, right? Like that is your primary source of um, word editing, uh, document editing, I should say. Uh, this is definitely for you. So some people are concerned, well, if I switch to Google Drive and Google Docs and the Google products, don't I have to redo all of my papers and everything? Um, and the good news is you don't. <laughs> um, so instead, you can actually upload a Microsoft Word document directly to Google Drive. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to, again, go back to my folder. Um, I've navigated here. This is where I'm keeping things today, along with George. And I'm going to click New. Before, I was going to Google Docs, but now I'm going to go to File Upload. What this means is I want to upload a file that exists on my computer as a Word document in this case, and I want to put it into this folder that you're looking at right now. So when I click File Upload, I now can see, and I hope you can see too, um, my file explorer on my computer um, where I keep all of my interesting things like my learning tracks for Lollipop and my Jet Cities folder, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you would first navigate to wherever on your computer the document you want to upload lives. So in this case, I'm actually already in that location. Um, so in this case, it's in downloads, but it could be somewhere else on your computer, wherever you save your Word documents. So I'm going to click on my Word document and I'm going to open it. You can see it started an upload and now it's there. You can also notice that over on the left hand side, my Google Docs have a certain icon and my Word document has a different icon, right? A W. So 
when I double click on my Word document, it will open in a new tab. And now I have my document here that I can edit. So if I wanted to just keep my document as a Word document, then I'm done. I could just do that, right? Like I can access it, others can access it, I can share it now, others can edit it. Like all of the things that are possible with the Google Doc are possible with the Microsoft uh, Word document in this scenario. Um, however, if for some reason I really wanted it to be a Google Doc too, like I just, I hate the different icons, I want them to all be Google Docs, you can make that happen. Um, you just click on File and then Save as Google Docs. And when you do that, it opened a new tab, but this one is now your Google Doc and the other one was your Word document. So when I go back into Intro to Google Docs, and again, remember, you don't have to change it from a Word document if you don't want to. It could stay that way and it would be okay. But when I go back, I've got to refresh my page because it hasn't updated. There we go. I've got one Word document that says Word to Google Doc example, which was my file that I uploaded. And I've got one Word to Google Doc example that is not a Google document. I can tell from, or sorry, a Word document. I can tell from the icon, right? So one of those was created into a Google Doc. They basically look the same, um, but that is, that's the idea. Um, I did also want to mention that there's actually a setting that you can do that makes it so that when you upload a Word document, it automatically changes it to a Google Doc, just like that. So if you are interested in that, um, it is on my step-by-step -step guide. Hold, please. Scrolling down. Yep. Okay. So here's here's my advanced tip. Um, this actually came from Sandy. I did not know this, and I was thrilled to learn it because I changed my settings immediately. <laughs> so you can set up Google Drive to automatically convert Word documents into Google documents. Again, navigate to drive.google.com, which is where we've been spending our time. Then you click on the settings cog in the top right. Looks like this. I'll show you in a moment. And then in the convert upload section, check the box next to convert uploaded files to Google Docs editor format. So I'm going to take you through that process very quickly. Here's drive.google.com up in the top right settings cog settings. And I'm looking for convert uploads. I'm going to check this box. And now when I upload a Word document, it's automatically gonna convert it to a Google Doc. So I don't need to go through that extra step. Quick reminder, you can also just upload as Word documents and be totally fine. But if for some reason you really want it to be a Google Doc, you have that option. I didn't see you click done. Uh, Did you, do you have to do that? You do have to do that. And what did you say was the benefit of immediately converting it to a Google Doc? The only thing that Sandy and I could think of um, was that if for some reason you just want all of your documents to be uniform, you want them all to be Google Docs and not Word documents, like if that's like a, just a personal choice, you have that option. I think at one point it did matter. There were some capabilities you could only get with a Google Doc. Um, but that is no longer true. So I see we have some raised hands. I'm so happy to answer questions. Or, or Sandy, you could as well. Um, well, let's see. the other thing I want to mention related to that is there's really no harm in having your Word documents automatically convert to a Google Doc because in a little bit I'm going to show you that you have the ability to download Google Docs as a Microsoft Word document. So you can go back and forth between the two. And I saw Deborah's hand up. Deborah, did that answer your question or did it you sure have did. a question? That answered my question. <laughs> All right. And Sharon has her hand up. You said that other people can go in then and and make changes to your documents? What if you don't want them to make changes to your documents? So you are very careful as to what privileges you give that individual. You can allow them to edit the document 
or you can allow them just to make comments or suggestions, which mm -hmm. don't really alter your document. It just puts a little bubble out to the side and said, maybe you want to change it to this. And we'll show you an example of that too um, in just a few minutes. That's a great question. Yeah. And the, um, that kind of protection is document by document. You can actually do it by folders as well on Google Drive. It doesn't have to be document by document, but it can be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Janice, did you have a question? Oh, I bet Janice is waiting for us to get back to her. <laughs> okay, got it. Okay. Um, all right. And that is everything I have in this section. Um, I have a so question. Just the basic, yeah, go ahead. If if could couldn't you end up with I have hundreds of documents, so I don't want to convert all of them, all of my Word docs to Google Docs. Um, why would I want to do this at all? I guess is one of my questions. So ultimately, oh Sandy, did you want to take it? No, go ahead. Okay, you don't need to. At one point in time, I would have told you, well, because these capabilities are only possible with Google Docs. But at this point in time, there's no real reason. But if if you're also asking the question, why would I even put any documents out in Google Drive? Mm -hmm. It's it's because of the collaboration. And we are going to have an activity that you're going to see in a little bit that will show you the fact that this is great for teamwork. Um, mm -hmm. When you're working in teams, especially like in our chorus world, this can make your life so much better when you're when you're reviewing documents and you're wanting to make changes and things like that. So the main reason you want to consider Google and Google Drive and its products is because of the collaboration that it has. Anything else you want to add to that, Rachel? Nope, that's great. Should we keep okay. going? Yeah, now let me let me mention one thing. Yep. I'm adding another um, link into the chat. That's another document, and it is a document that I found extremely helpful. So I'm very used to where everything is located in Microsoft Word, but I am not quite as used to where my insert table is or where my find and replace is in Google Docs. So this is um, a, a quick reference guide that sort of talks to you. And I'm going to share my screen for just a minute, if that's OK, Rachel. You bet. And let's see here. And this may be just a little bit hard to see because of the coloring on it, but it shows you the Google Docs screen and it talks about where you enter your document name. It has some of the same information that Rachel just went over, but what I like is this second page. So if you want to edit a document, it tells you exactly where on the menu, and I can't make this much bigger, uh, but you'll see it when you download it. Um, where I can go to find where the find and replace is, or where to insert a page break, or where to do certain formatting of texts and paragraphs. So this is another resource for you as you get familiar with Google Docs and you want to find where something is in the menu options, this might be helpful to you. Okay. Awesome. All right, I'm going to Go back to our slideshow here, and I'm going to just move us right along. <laughs> okay, Sandy, take it away. Okay, so um, Rachel covered a little bit of this in how to upload uh, a Microsoft Word document to Google Drive, but I am going to share my screen again. Uh, oh, I am still sharing it. Never mind. I going to do it here and now I'm in my own drive and I have lots of folders and everything but I'm going to show you how you can actually upload multiple documents to your 
Google Drive. So I'm going to new, just like Rachel did. I'm, I'm going to go to file upload, just like she did earlier. And it's bringing up my explorer oh my goodness and would you look at that you have a picture of me that i didn't intend for you to necessarily see but i have several documents out here i'm going to go to my downloads folder which is where i want to do some uploading from and i'm just going to choose whatever documents by either check clicking the checkbox to the left of the document name and you notice, if you can see this, and this is a little bit small, I'm choosing Excel spreadsheets. I'm choosing a Word document. I am choosing a PDF document. I can choose a, a photo as well. And I'm just selecting what I want to upload. So I am selecting multiple documents that are going to get uploaded to my drive. Once I've select all the documents that I want to upload, I would go down to this open button at the bottom right hand side of that Explorer window, click it, and it would bring those documents into my drive. I'm not going to click the open because I don't really want these in there, but I wanted to show you how to be able to upload multiple items. The same thing is true if I want to upload an entire folder. I just check, I just click on that folder and I can click open there, or I can go to new and do folder upload from the menu and choose a folder that way as well. And it'll bring in all of the documents in that folder, including any subfolders that I have. So with my course, Helena Express Singers, I am in the process of actually creating a drive for our management team to use. And I had all of these folders on my desktop with all my Word documents in it, which is primarily what we're talking about today. And I actually uploaded the entire folder so it maintained my whole organizational structure. So that's another way to do that. Then the, what I wanna share with you is how you can easily convert a Word document to a Google Docs. So remember how Rachel showed you these icons? Here's one that's called Technology Education Business Plan Doc. This is what we put together to present to the RMT for permission to do these technology workshops. And if I open that up, and I go to file once it's opened. In one second, okay. File, save as Google Docs. And that's all I have to do to convert that to a Google Doc. When I do that, it, again, it opens that up in a tab. Now my icon is a Google Doc icon. If I go back to um, my drive, I can see the original Word document and I'm gonna have to refresh my page here a second. And here's the Word document. Here is the Google document that I just converted to. So notice when I convert to a Word document to Google, it still actually kept that Word document out there and then also created a new version, which was a Google Doc. So if I then didn't want to keep that Word document, I could just remove it. But notice that you get actually the Word document still there, but it converted it to a Google Doc. Does that make sense to people? Are there any questions on that? I have a question. I yes. can just see me creating both of these guys and then not remembering which one I used last and, and trying to remember which one I changed. Um, so that's one comment that I have. And the other question that I have, I've noticed that every time that you guys have done that, the Google Doc uses a lot less memory than the Word Doc. 
Correct. That's correct. Is there, is there an advantage to that in your computer to having less memory in the docs? Well, remember that Google Docs are being saved in the cloud uh -huh. and you have Google Google Drive has the free version of that has so much storage. And so it's trying to be as efficient with that storage in the Google Drive as it can be. So it's it's not saving those those files aren't nearly as large. You can always expand your storage, but you can sort of see on my screen, I'm working in a folder with expanded storage that I paid for, but the smaller the dock, the less storage you're using. That's basically, you know, what I'm saying. Word is saving those on your computer. They're larger files. They're taking up your, your computer space. So, um, so, any, mm -hmm. so, Word would save your your last edit, whatever it was, and then in Google Drive, it would be all the consecutive edits that your uh, collaborators added to it. Correct? That is correct. And in just thirty seconds, Rachel's going to talk more about collaboration. She covered a lot of the topics I was going to cover as well. So I want to thank you very much, Rachel, for doing that. But I did want to show you when I'm looking at my Google Drive and I'm seeing all of this information out here, I am looking the, at this in a list view. So if, if you ended up with two versions and you forgot to get rid of one of those, the other thing you can do is here's your dates when they were last modified. So if you want to get the correct version, you have a column that actually shows you the date it was modified. So that might be helpful uh, as well if you get too many out. But my recommendation would be if you're going to convert it to a Google Doc, then I would just get rid of that Word document that it created. I would just remove that. And then, then you have no worries. Now, what I want to show you also real quick, and then we're going to, to Rachel, is I'm opening that back up again. And I want to go back to my Word document. The way I would do that is go to File. And Rachel, you might have a quicker way of doing this from your expertise. Whoops, I'm not sure what it just did, but let me go back over here. I want to go to File, and I can actually download, and this is getting to your questions, Janice, as well. I can say I want to download that, and I want to download it as my Microsoft Word document instead of the Google Docs. I could actually go to this open document format, which I've encountered people in my course that use it. And this is one of the beauties of Google Docs is if someone doesn't have access to Docs, but they use that free open source um, word processing, that's what this open document format is, that could be saved and then they'd be able to open it. They could open it up in rich text format and Janice, to answer your question, you could download it as a PDF document and that could be saved to whoever, sent to whoever you wanted it to be sent to as well. Any other, um, any other things that you wanted to say regarding that, Rachel? Nope, you got it. All right, I'm going to stop sharing and let you go on to collaboration. Okay. Let's see here. That's the one I want. Okay. So, um, specifically, I want to talk about sharing and then commenting and making suggestions. So, a lot of you have mentioned or maybe even just been thinking about um, the stress of letting somebody else edit your document that you actually might not want to edit your document, right? So how can they see it without um, maybe mucking things up a bit? So let's talk about that. I'm going to do this. All right. So I'm going to go back to my um, same folder I was in earlier where I'm keeping George and I'm going to click on my sharing example here. Okay. So I just um, copy pasted a page from the SAI website, just for an example here, um, something we all we all know about. So uh, don't worry too much about the text in this instance, but going on, if I would like to share this with somebody, I hit the share button up at the top right. I'll do that again. Sorry, I think I went a little quick. So up in the top right is the share button. 
and I'm going to click on that. And then I've got um, this, this menu of options, right? So, so I can share with an individual person, for example, um, I can share with like myself, my actual personal account. Um, so I could click on that and then Rachel Pack would have editing privileges. So, okay, Rachel Pack is now an editor. Um, if I notify her, if I keep this checkbox on, then she will get an email that she has editing permissions. I could also type a personalized message here if I wanted to, or I could add people. Um, whoop, I don't know if I actually have anybody else in this address book, just because it's a, I'll just put another of my emails, millions of them. There we go. Okay. So I could just add as many people as I wanted. Um, and if this is like you're coming from your regular email, like your regular Gmail account that you use, and then you use your drive with that Gmail account, it will auto populate in when you start typing somebody's um, email, it'll just come up. Um, so in any case, let's say I do not want Rachel to have editing privileges. That makes me nervous. Um, I want my document to stay exactly as it is. So I'm gonna click this drop down arrow. And I'm going to make Rachel Pack a viewer instead. So now as Rachel Pack, I can only view. I'll show you what that looks like. I don't need to notify myself because I know that it's there. So right now I'm in our region 13 tech um, Google. I'm gonna switch over to my personal Google, which is what I just shared it with. So now pretend like I'm a totally different person. Okay, I can now look at the document from my other account, um, but I cannot edit it can't edit it at all. I can highlight things, um, but if I tried to say delete this with the backspace button, it doesn't work. Um, what did happen is that Rachel forgot to change something and that changed that, hold please. Okay, so there we go. So theoretically I would be on viewer, there we go. Sorry, because I was practicing this earlier, it saved a setting there. And then it got confused when I tried to add myself again. Okay. So I'm on viewer. And if I try to highlight and delete, oh, I swear. <laughs> Hold on. What are you doing? Viewer. This is good. Okay. I wonder if it's just freaking out because I have tabs open. Just going to be patient for a second. There we go. Okay. I feel better. Um, sorry, because I was switching between two accounts, I think really quickly, I think it just got confused like what was happening. But if you send it to somebody else and you just give them viewing privileges, they will not be able to enter or to edit it, okay? So I'm trying to hit the backspace button, nothing's happening. Okay, I'm gonna X out of this so it doesn't get confused. Okay. And then if I change the sharing permissions for Rachel to commenter okay this is something we haven't talked about before commenter and then save when i then open that document up as rachel hopefully i'm going more slowly so it doesn't get confused this time <laughs> oh good it says i'm suggesting so now when i try to change things let's say i'm looking at this document and i don't think this sentence fits here i can highlight it and i can backspace it try to get rid of it but it's not going to actually delete it. It's just going to show up as a suggestion to delete it. Um, I could also add something. Um, just add some text in there. You can see it's it's got that green marking around it. Okay. So <laughs> when I go back to the original account, this is what you would see. So if you send this to somebody to comment, right, they've commented and now you see this. So there are the, like, this is crossed out, this is added, but you can clearly see that there's suggestions. And over on the right-hand side, it shows you each of them, and you can actually decide if you want to accept or reject each suggestion. So let's say I'm just like, well, that sentence shouldn't be gone. I love that sentence. Then I could just reject the suggestion. But let's say I do want it to say the best barbershop singing. I could say accept, and it would become an official part of my document, okay? Um, the one other thing you can do as a commenter is, well, comment, which you highlight something. And then up here, there's an add comment button. Okay, this is next to where our formatting tools are from earlier. Add comment. 
And then I can say, um, this sentence is amazing. Okay, comment. And now, again, from my original account, here's what I see. Rachel said that the sentence is amazing. Awesome. I can mark it as resolved and hide it. Okay. And now I would move on with my life. So that is how to share with one individual or a specific group of individuals. But you can also share with a group or anyone, I should say. So down here, when you first go into your sharing settings, if you've never been there before, it's actually going to look more like this. So it says restricted. Only people added can open this link, which means you can copy this link here and you can send it to Joe Schmo and his sister and brother and cousin and whatnot. But if Joe Schmo's name is not up here, he won't be able to open it. However, if Joe Schmo's name is up here, then he will. Okay, it's restricted access. You choose. You might have Joe listed as an editor and Rachel's just a commenter, right? But you get to choose. However, down here, you can switch it to change to anyone with the link. And when I do that, now it's anyone with this link, whoop, sorry, anyone on the internet with this link can view it. That doesn't mean everyone will view it, but what that means is when you hit copy link, now if you go and paste that into an email and send it to your whole chorus, everybody in your chorus has access to this. You don't need to type their names individually up top. Um, if I click change, just so you can see the other settings right now, all they can do is view my document. But again, if I wanted to send it to even put it on Facebook for everybody in the world to see it, right. I could switch it to editor if I was feeling really brave, or, um, I could switch it to comment or whatever's, whatever's good for your situation. You get to choose who sees your document and what kind of access they have to it. Okay. I think that's everything for this. Um, we have an activity, but we are pretty much at time. So Sandy, do you want to jump to printing and downloading? And then if, if people want to stick around for the activity, they'd be more than welcome, but no pressure. Yes, that would be okay. great. That sounds good. All right. So let me share my screen. So I am back in that step-by-step -step guide that Rachel was using. And what I want to do is show you how to print, change your page layout, and also how to download. So if I wanted to print this step-by-step, -step, I would go to File. And I would scroll down. And at the very bottom, there's a Print button. I would click the Print. And it brings up my printer, and I would uh, print a window, and I could click the print button, and it would send it to my printer. If I wanted to download this to my computer or my device that I'm on, I already sort of showed you that. You can go to File, Download, choose what version you want to download, and say I want to do Microsoft Word, I would click that Microsoft Word and it will download that to my computer and you might not be able to see this but I have a little download um, we can uh, see it can you and it downloaded that to my computer the other thing we didn't cover that I want to real quickly cover is how to change your page layout it's not as intuitive as the word product is and I had to find where that was so if you go to file again and you go down right above print there's a page setup feature and here's where you can change your margins what paper uh, what um, orientation and if you really like a particular set of margins and orientation and you want to always have that be what opens up when you create a new Google Doc you can click on the set as default button and it will always maintain those settings unless you go back into page setup and change those. All right, Rachel, let's 
any questions on the print or the download? We've covered a lot of information. You so guys have been things. great <laughs> to hang in there with us. But we do have a fun activity if you want to see how the collaboration yes. works. Yeah, so um, so I'm really excited about this. And, and if you have to go, I totally get it. You know, um, we are at time. So, but uh, if you've got a few minutes to stick around, here's what this activity is. I'm going to go ahead and pop it into my browser so I can show you and then I'll give it to you in a moment here. So this is what it looks like. I have created a Google Doc with a table, by the way, um, and it has most, if not all of your names here on the left hand side, unless you registered sometime um, later in today. So they're all in alphabetical order. You can scroll through and I want you to find your name. In this case, my name is Rachel Pack. And then I want you to type in your favorite food. Um, Sandy already typed in hers, which was chocolate. And surprise, surprise, that's actually mine also. <laughs> so that is all you have to do. Um, and if you want to bold it or change the color or do something with the formatting just to play around with it, you're more than welcome. Um, we are all going to have editing privileges with this document right here, right now. So what you're going to see is other cursors from other people, but try to find your name. And if your name's not there for some reason, scroll down to the bottom, you can just add it. Okay. And Rachel, I put that yeah. in the chat room. So oh, you if people got it. click on the link. Yes. Perfect. Go ahead and click on it and, uh, find your name. And if you don't have the capability, it's okay. You can just watch my screen. Oh, I see Denise and Deborah have both found theirs and Connie and Cindy and Sherry. Nice. <laughs> hmm. I can't even get to my name. What am I doing wrong? Are you looking at your Zoom screen or are you looking, looking at, at my Zoom screen? What am I supposed to be looking at? So your Zoom screen is is my screen. So I'll stop sharing for just a moment so it makes it a little less confusing. Okay. So, so where in, am I? So where in the chat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in the chat, there's a link um, right at the bottom of the chat. So if you click the most recent link in the chat, it's going to open up that document for you in a browser window. Did that work for you? Yes. Good. Okay. So what I want you to notice, um, all of you as you're editing is, is you can see other people editing as well in real time. So this can be such a great tool for collaboration, right? Everybody on your team can make notes in the same document. They could actually make notes at the same time if you wanted them to, um, or everybody has access and certain people add on a Thursday night and other people add on Saturday morning and then your document's ready to go for your Sunday meeting, right? So there, there are really great capabilities of the Google Docs and the collaboration that it provides especially is pretty awesome. So um, Sandy, anything I missed on that? Well, if, if people are looking at that document that we've been putting our favorite food into, you see all those different colored lines? Those represent the individuals that are in this document all at the same time mm -hmm. and where their cursor mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. So you can see the power of this because there's lots of people in editing this. Um, would you also just show them the version history of yes. the document again? Absolutely. Okay. I'm sharing my screen. Um, so in Zoom, um, up top, ooh, is it view or is it file? It's file. Okay. So you can see who has changed what um, over time. So let's say I went to this document and I went, oh no, I didn't mean for anybody to add anything. What the heck? Ah, um, and then I panic. But instead, I'm actually going to go file, version history, and I can see the version history. So I'm going to click on that. And now I get to see <laughs> all of the things that have changed. So <laughs> today um, at 7.39, Right, that's my current version. I can click on that and it shows my current version. Um, at 736, I can click on that. Um, it shows the current version then, so several things are not there anymore. Um, I can go back even further, right? 
uh, to where Sandy had chocolate and nobody had anything else, right? And I could actually reinstate this version if I wanted. Um, so up top, there's a restore this version button. If I click that, all of the um, things that have happened since January 21st at 3.28 p.m. don't happen anymore. Um, or, you know, I could just hit the back button and go back to our version right now. You can also name versions. So um, if you have like a set of information that you want to, to maintain and be able to find it easily, right? You could name that version. And then maybe at your next meeting, a bunch of other things get added to that document. Um, you could then again, name that version if you want it. That's one feature that it does provide. Um, version dynamic reference. Huh. Um, so Jermaine, just make sure that you're in the, that you clicked on the link. So I'll stop sharing again. So if you're looking at your Zoom window, you can't edit it because it's, it's my, it's my screen that you're seeing. It's my cursor. But if I'm not sharing my screen, right, and you go to the, um, the last link in the chat and click on that, it will open up your own version of it. And then you should be able to edit it. So let me know if that doesn't work for some reason. Um, Sandy, does that, does that cover it, you think? I think so. And we have covered so much, but so much. I have your email addresses from registering. I am going to send all of you an email tomorrow that will have the step by step guide in it, the quick reference guide in it, and a link to the recording. Because chances are you're going to need to go back and watch this and pause it and say, oh, yeah, that's how I do this. And then start it up again and watch it two or three times at least. So we're going to stick around with to answer more questions for a while, if you'd like. And I saw, Cindy, you have um, your hand up. Well, you sort of answered my question by saying you'll stick around because um, you were going to talk about tables. Yes. For one of the other gals. So I just want Thank to Thank you. you. Yes. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. Um, yeah. And I'm just going to keep this favorite foods document up. And I'm going to click down below that table that was there. And I'm going to go up to insert. And look at there. Here's where you insert an image. Here's where you insert a table. And notice that that table allows you to say, OK, I, I'm going to just drag across because I want five columns. And then I'm going to drag down because I want six rows. And there's my table. Thank you for the reminder, Cindy. And can you adjust? This is equal column space. Could I make one of those columns narrower? Yes. Does it work just like Word? It works just like Excel oh. or Word does. See how oh. I've got a double arrow here? Oh. Okay. I can just drag that to make it smaller, and then it enlarge the one to the right of it. OK. And actually, if you want to make adjustments to table, I don't know how many of you are right clickers. I use the right mouse button all the time. I just clicked using my right mouse button. And here's all of your things you can do with this table. Okay. So I can insert rows. I can add a link. I can go into the actual table properties and make some adjustments as well with color and alignment. So when you're in a table, and this is quite different from Word, um, in Word you get these fun little um, tabs that open up depending upon what you're in and then all of your properties are in that new tab. Here you want to click with your right mouse button to get okay. the properties, okay? Okay. And then I have a question about um, whether you know we're using um, uh, our storage, and I'm thinking this would be better to move all of our documents into uh, Google Drive for storage. But do you know uh, what what the breaking point is between free and when you need to start paying? And then how much you have to pay? Do you know that off the top of your head, Rachel? Yep. It's 15 gigabytes, which holds a heck of a lot. So um, so throughout the pandemic, um, I had my chorus members email me snippets of themselves singing um, video recordings, audio recordings, and I was able to, to get a ton of stuff in there. So um, 
So, I mean, you can hit the limit eventually. Um, I recently had to take some things out that I haven't used in years and years, but um, mm -hmm. but 15 gigs does quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And your regional management team is using this, and we have several years worth of, of documents that we brought in. So we did increase the storage to 100 gig. It's a very nominal fee for um, that much storage. So, and and we haven't even begun to use most and of that. And then how do you, I mean, is there a label to what it's called in storage? I mean, it started with one person, email, keeping it there. I mean, uh, who is there an owner to it or? So, so somebody creates an account. So in our case, we created an account using a regional Gmail address. Okay. Okay, and when you create that Gmail account, you automatically have Google Drive and all of the Google products. The other thing I think I will send to everybody in this class is the link to watch the YouTube um, recording of the Google Drive that that training that Rachel and I did first, because that talks about how Google Drive Drive has all Google has all these products, and Docs reside in Google Drive. Sheets, which is the equivalent of Excel, reside in, in Google Drive. And so I'll send that link out to you along with how to get to some of our other tips and tricks. Because I think to go back to the basics might be very helpful too uh, of how that works. Okay, thank you. Can I ask a question? Uh, uh, have... Jermaine here. I'm sorry. I'm just wondering, I've got an Apple. Am I am I a, a sound flowing in the opposite direction or what? You're on an Apple Apple computer, you said. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm not sure how. Uh, you know, Apple is a uh, makes great graphical and and computers used for graphical and marketing and things like that. Um, in the real world more people are using Microsoft products or are using Google products. So I don't, I would, I don't know how this would work on an Apple computer, to be honest with you. Rachel, have you had any experience with that? Okay. I have. So, um, so I don't know anything about like, like, whatever if there's like an apple equivalent of a word processor like microsoft word or you know i don't know anything about how that um works with drive but what i do know is um if you're an apple user all you have to do is just follow the exact same steps as far as like um you go to drive.google.com and then you can create documents and it all works the same way so um so at my last job I'm a PC user and my um, my um, colleague was a Mac user and we had no problem sharing documents back and forth. It worked really well for us. Oh, that's great. All right, thank you very much. I'm relieved. <laughs> I I have a question. Oh, is it me, Judy? Yeah, go ahead, Judy. Sorry. When you were going through that list and we were writing our favorite name, our favorite foods, I wrote in something and then I was looking for my name and it disappeared. I didn't do anything. I didn't press enter. I didn't do anything. But when I went back and looked and when you were showing the list, it, my name's not there anymore. It's so that right did it yeah. happened at the time that she was switching between versions. I, I, don't, I don't believe so. So, um, so here's my best guess. So, um, if, so, I, so I'm screen sharing the document right now. So if anybody came over to your name and highlighted it by accident and backspaced it, it got deleted. Okay. So um, so that is the, the one um, scary thing about, right? Like having lots of people edit the same document is, is people can touch different pieces of the document, um, but that's really what that version history is for. So in this case, since we were all editing at once, it kind of, the program kind of lumped those in together. Like we could go back five minutes, but then everybody's work would be gone. But in general, um, that, that kind of situation just doesn't happen that often, right? Like mostly people are, I would say, editing at different times. 
um, not that you can't use it this way and you can just make sure that everybody knows like, okay, this is your section you're editing in and that they don't cross over because that can happen. Yep. Yep. Shelly, you've had your hand up for a while. Can yes, we help I you? Jan I think Janice had her hand up before me. Oh. So maybe ask her first. Janice, do you still have a question or did we answer your question? You're muted, Janice. I'm sorry, I don't know how the hand got up. I must have hit something <laughs> okay. by mistake. Okay, okay um, well that's okay. Nancy also put a question in the chat quite a while ago. Oh, okay. Um, My question is, um, several of the courses I'm involved in are using Groupanizer as a basically a file cabinet for everything that we do um, and it's not something that people can go in and edit like this collaboration um, also another course i'm in is using dropbox um, and so i it's like how, how do i compare all these different products and decide what is the best thing? And I think. Well, again, think about it, Nancy. Groupanizer is really was designed for a website. It does have a document storage area, but you can't edit those documents on the fly, right? You've got right. to download them. So that collaborative piece that you see with the Google products is what Groupanizer doesn't have. And Dropbox is just a storage area for documents and files as well. You cannot go into Dropbox and edit a file. You have to download it and then re-upload it into Dropbox. So that's why we are trying to show choruses the fact that this is using Google puts you in a true team environment where you can collaborate and work without going through a lot of extra steps and you're always looking at the most current version of something. Does that okay. help? Yes, it does. That does. Thank you. Shelly, do you still have a question? I oh. do. I have two other two comments too before I get to my questions. My question. Um, one is similar to uh, for Judy who could who lost her name um, one thing that you can do in Google Docs that's similar to Word but it's individual to you so there were all of us were in there editing that but if I make a mistake and I'm still in there I can use the back button but it and it only erases whatever the last thing I did it doesn't necessarily erase what other people did so it's possible maybe you deleted it if you hit the back button maybe your name will show up that's one thing uh, the other thing the other thing that i think is a real benefit to this and you know there's benefits to dropbox as well or those other um, storage places is that as a chorus it gives you a place to save things and it's not tied to an individual you can save it as something for your chorus so as individuals change or, or leaders change then you just you still have the same place where everything's at so those are just my two comments my question <laughs> is related to tables and i was wondering if there's the ability to format the tables the look and feel of the tables similar to word sandy or is it um you know how you can pick a where the different alternating rows or highlighted different and all of that is that something that's possible um, rachel within a word document is that possible that you know of within a google Without document it. no so this is actually the one feature of word that i miss because when i want to format my tables to be prettier um, i end up like looking for examples online and then like manually like okay rows one three five seven i highlight them all and then i change them to light blue or whatever but um there's not really an, an easy way like in word to change the formatting over all of your table yeah and that that's good because that's that was what i was going to say so thank you for for um collaborating and 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 saying that that is the way it is so um we are going to do a class on sheets which is similar to excel which has some of those features but the table is not nearly as robust in google docs as it is in microsoft word but will it save it if you create the table in word 
will it convert as is over to Google Docs if you save it as a Google Doc? It, it'll it'll you'll want to you want to bring it in and and convert it to what's called sheets in Google. Okay, not okay. Yeah, and you can copy um, sheets information and paste it into Google Docs, and it'll maintain the formatting. But if you if you are um, shading every other row a diff a, a different color and you go to insert another row or two it doesn't maintain that in in the google docs you would have to really adjust it in sheets and then copy it again so yeah although you can actually link it to i mean this is advanced but true. you can link it to sheets and then change it in sheets and then just update it so anyway that is true but that's a, that's advanced yeah definitely you guys are um, such troopers it's been a long <laughs> long hour and a half for you I like to see the enthusiasm and excitement, though. Yeah, I've got a question about spell check. <laughs> yes. So, so I just want to address that, Nancy. Um, so, I'm going to share my screen again. And oh, left so that's nice. Um, okay. So for spell check, it's going to automatically tell you if you spell something incorrectly. Um, let's see. Oh, so let's say I can't spell chocolate. I spelled it like that. Right, it puts the red squiggly under it just like it would in Word. So I can right click on that and then it's giving me a suggestion. Um, alternatively, if uh, if I have my red squiggly, there's a, a spell check button. So up at the top left next to the print button, print here, spelling and grammar check is right here. I can click on that and it's actually going to take me through um, all of the errors in my document so I can I can basically edit them one by one. So I'm not sure if popcorn sushi was supposed to be one word or not, Nancy, but um, I'm gonna say that it's two words. So I'm gonna accept that. And yep, I meant to spell it chocolate. That's right, accept. So I can do that as well. All right, um, Deborah, a question? You just answered it. Oh, good. I love answering questions. Any other questions? This has been great. Thanks, guys. Yeah, you're so welcome. Okay, watch for your emails from me next tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Have a good weekend. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Many, many thanks. Great job. Bye. Thank you.